Three, two, one. Good morning, crew. It's Monday morning. It really is Monday morning. Early doors. We're up with our brews and we're ready for another crew cast. I look a lot more put together than you do. Ah, oh, mornings are not my You look like thing. a Jersey Shore reject. I, I kind of do. I bought this from ASOS in sale. It's a snakeskin looking vest. Um, I kind of love it. <laughs> I've mixed opinions on yeah, I thought He's wearing might. that and he's wearing my oversized Gymshark <laughs> tracksuit No, these bottoms. aren't yours. yours, are yours. These are the uh, well, they mediums are or whatever. Ma- no, they sent smalls. me a small by accident. I'm an extra small and they There's are a... oversized. And I tried them on and I was like, these are not going to fit. And They're I was like, huge. Lex, these might actually fit you. And they do. Yeah. So now we both have his and hers of them. <laughs> his and hers, 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 tracksuit bottoms. Yeah. The gym show, they're nice, I like them. I like, kind of so like them. So guys, having... if you're looking for the best tracks of all, <laughs> You can, yeah. If, the, if they're you still in stock, the girls. go onto the gym shop website. Um, the oversized gym shop girls tracksuit bottoms with gym shop written down the side of them in like um, a, a long I really like the khaki band. ones. Yeah, they're, they're really cool. They look good. Go get them. I've got them in a size small and they're big. They're huge. I don't know how oh, they drowned you. It was hilarious when you put them on. It was like you were in your dad's pants. No, like they... You do, girls, you do not size up in them. No. <laughs> no, 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 You have to size, like, double down. Yeah. Well, um, they are meant to be big. So. Yeah, but that, yeah, but wow, we've had some great weather here recently. Yeah. Which is... Look how tan Joe. Yeah. Oh, yeah. You, I was yeah, actually look. being sarcastic. Oh, I am. Shut up, I'm brown. We don't really go out in it. Well, look how brown I am. I, I do sit out in the sun deliberately, go out, and I've been out on my bike. It's been beautiful weather. Been out riding, been out well, we've been sitting. We've the dogs for a Taking the dogs well. out. It's yeah. been, it, the weather makes a huge, huge difference. Whenever it's sunny, I just feel better. I feel more productive. I feel happier. Yeah. I think, I think, I think it's a big thing is we get stuck inside too much. Yeah. And then we kind of go stir crazy. And I think this is something we don't realise. And it's something also put out there. Feel a bit shitty. Go outside. You'll be shocked. Really cheers you up. Especially when it's sun shining. Thought of the day. Thought of the day. It is. Thought of the morning. Monday morning thoughts. <laughs> it's true though. We decided well, we have, we have, make your environment <clears throat> nicer as well. I think we work a lot during the day and we only kind of start relaxing about like 8pm, 9pm. It's kind of like from dinner time onwards we kind of like start unwinding. And in the winter that means it's already dark outside and we don't do anything. <sighs> so we just sit and watch TV. Winter sucks. Dark Whereas at 4 o'clock. Ugh. Now, the last couple of days, we've been like, oh, we bring the dogs for a walk up to the pub, get a glass of wine, get a coffee. And, yep. it's, and it's still bright when we get home at like half ten. And then the dogs have gotten a walk. They've gotten out and about socialising. Socialising yeah. the dogs. Jeez, taking the dogs to the pub is, Lenny thinks it's, it's a breeze and fine. You can't relax when you have those two little squirrels I don't think around. it's a breeze. I think I like to include them in our social outings. Not all of them. Like, if we went for a meal, I don't think I'd feel comfortable because they drive me mad. But I just like to do stuff with it's them. It's not even a contemplation taking a dog to a meal. Well, we, we did when we went to the pub before. We had dinner. When? Yeah, like two weeks ago. Oh, it was just me and you on a random jaunt, though. Yeah, but we still you brought them. You look like you plan an evening out and go bring the dogs. I know, but like... Pests. No, there are places you can go, especially around where we live. It is like kind of countryside, and a lot of the pubs are like dog friendly. So you go in, and they've got like biscuits, nice. and they've got like water, and they they don't re like as long as your dog isn't like a mental case, they don't really mind them sniffing about. They know the dogs are going to be sniffing. And do we saw one yesterday? I took my pops out for um his Sunday beer, so that's nice. I'm back at home away from traveling, so obviously we've been away. Um, and took him out for his Sunday beer. He ended up having a full pint. This time, well, they had two halves. It's a full pint overall. But I got eaten alive by midges. I have bites all over me. I must have tasty blood. I swear to God. It's that tan. You're mm. tracking them. That Jersey Shore tan. The Jersey Shore tan. They're like, that guy looks like deep, rich chocolate. Let's go nibble on him. And then they get to me and they're like, mmm, he tastes like chili beef. Crispy chili beef. Mmm, give me some more. And they call over their little mates. I swear, bugs that don't even bite try and have a bite of me. Well, I feel itchy everywhere now. I've talked about that. Do you ever do that where you talk about something and then you start, like, talk about kids' head lice, you start scratching your head? Yeah. Bet you everyone listening to this now is now scratching their head, talking about lice, yeah, head lice. Yeah, lice and midges Do you ever get you. lice when you're younger? Uh, once. Well, we called it nits. They weren't... Yeah, is nits. It nits. Yeah, yeah, head lice. Yeah, basically at primary school, you would, you would get everything once other than the plague. Oh, there was four girls in our family. <laughs> we all had long hair and... It, once one of us got it, we all 
Do you know, though, if you did have head lice, it was a sign of... That's uh, bullshit. Cl- clean hair. Yeah, clean hair. No, they like clean hair. They don't like dirty hair. So you're more likely to get it here clean hair. That's bullshit. That's dirty people just being like, oh, I don't wash my hair because I don't want to get lice. <laughs> and then they didn't have the lice. No, I think... No, it's bullshit. I don't think it They're is. not fussy at all. It's just people like trying to... You reckon? Yeah. That is like definitely uh, like an old knowledge. fable. I like to live in the they, knowledge. That's that, your mum that con- <laughs> consoling you going, they only like the clean hair, don't they? <laughs> yeah. That's not consoling you. That's telling you you're a dirty child. And that why would, why would you make that up? Because that would make kids not wash. That would be the anti-idea. Surely you tell them that they love dirty hair if you're going to make something up. Therefore, I believe it's true. No. Yeah, but I only got it once. Wasn't, wasn't I'd that, say it was just like on a running cycle in our house with all of us. What was that ding? Turn that ding um, off. Sorry, that is just my phone. You is... know that happens at like 3am in the morning. Well, I wasn't even wearing my watch last night. So. No, but on common occasion. Yeah, it's just... It's... I wake up half bog-eyed with a bong going off. It's your bloody watch. I have it on silent now. Sorry. Apple watches are pretty nifty. I do want one now. I To be honest, when I first had it, I was just like, I don't know what to do with it. Like, I really didn't know what to do with it. But now I've got everything synced up to it, so... Is it one of those, now you can be without it? Yeah. Like, yesterday it wasn't charged and I didn't have it on me. And just, like, even the fact that... Not that I'm obsessed with how many steps I do, I'm not. But, like, I was kind of, like, just out of interest. I was like, I wonder how many steps I did today. And I was like, oh... That's actually the main reason I bought it. Uh, because it was more in-depth. Yeah. They are pretty good, so... It tells yeah, you your heart rate We didn't get it because we're, we're trendy. I mean, we are super cool. Obviously, as you can see, if you're watching on YouTube, <laughs> with my snakeskin vest on and my sandal. No, are they sliders? Sliders. Yeah, sliders are cool. Like. By the way, Adidas Some... sliders are 100% the best ones yeah. out of the whole marketplace. Um, yeah, we actually, I got you the Apple Watch because they're so in-depth and you can track, like, they're a bit better at tracking sleep and movement because don't, can't they monitor your heart rate? Isn't that the main part of them? Yeah, like they, so that's it, why it makes them better. But it, it does everything. It does like, everything then, yeah. Like it sure. even sends through my WhatsApps, my messages, yeah, Instagram, but, when I get an Instagram message. And definitely down, I'm gonna have to get one. But anyway, that's our Monday ramble nonsense. Anything right, what do we need to cover before we start the main topic? Because today's main topic is gonna be about the kind of the the, the the ugly tree to being shredded. Because we're in that time of year now where everyone's dieting for their summer. Summer shredding. Summer shreds. <laughs> and um People message me, and I forget, because we live in our little bubble, that there are still people that don't understand food and things like that. So I want to cover a bit of it, because I've been getting a lot of questions about it recently on Insta, Instagram. Um, so, what else have we got? Um, quick updates. So, we're home. It is um, going to be a couple of weeks until we're away again. So, podcast will be every Monday, as per usual. I apologise, we did miss one week when we were out travelling, didn't we? I don't know. Yeah, we missed one. So we're on episode 13. So thank you all for tuning in. And the feedback you've been giving has been awesome. Um, I'm back because Lex had his little guests in. Yeah, that was it. Yeah, so, so they're all done now. Comment down below if you're enjoying <laughs> Laney being back in the mix. <laughs> it is nice to have the guests in, but... Yeah. And there's going to be more of that. So I'm planning on going out to stay with Doug uh, Faze Martin. Doug Sensor Martin of Faze Clan. Jesus, that's confusing every time you get that wrong. Face sensor. Face sensor, yeah. Um, and at the same time, then, once we've been to Doug, we're going to go and uh, nip across to the Jersey Shore, do a bit of surfing for a little bit, and Since hook up with, with David. Yeah, and I'm going to work on my crispy beef chilli tan. Um, and hopefully that'll be uh, probably July, early July, some point in there. So we'll have more guests coming on, but until then, we're just going to be the Bob Stream myself back on. I'm thinking of starting a new channel for the Crewcast. Let me know about this. I'm thinking of setting up an independent channel for it, um, and having them on there I'm also going to set up a website and uh, so there'll be way more places for you to just go and find them because we do release these on all platforms so obviously they're on SoundCloud iTunes and the U of Tube but it does get a little bit kind of I'd like to have one point of reference where you could just go to to see kind where like things are I have for my um, for my cooking sometimes what? when you're searching for something on the interweb um, if you know if it's in just one location, it's a lot easier. Right. Like, so, like, with my recipes, I took them out of my vlogs because no one's going to search oh, through a vlog from yeah, three yeah. years ago. Yeah, 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 So. I just think, yeah, it's a good way of doing that, and it keeps things um, easy for you guys to be notified a bit more on sense of all the fuckery that's going on with YouTube. Yeah, turn on the notifications for all our channels, guys, because they really Yeah, you really messy. do have to. They're still... Um, 
I, 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 someone came up to me in the bloody petrol station the other day. I was filling up a car last night. Um, like, yo, Lex, across the courtyard. What's up, man? And one person says, you still on YouTube? Yeah. Like, Dude, I'm uploading like three times a week. It's still fuckery going on. Oh, definitely. Piss and it's like, up. it's not even just like us. It's, oh, no, it's, it's bigger YouTubers are coming out now because it's like affecting their income. And when you have to think about it, like people who are doing YouTube and doing Instagram full time, it's their salary. Yeah. And you're support, actually supporting their what? salary and their, their life. And um, when YouTube and Instagram start messing with Fucking algorithms things. and stuff like that, you they're affecting people's lives. Like, and I think it's going to have to take, it'll get to a drastic well, point where they're going to realise we can't keep doing this. We can't keep messing with people's and lives. And what makes it worse is, I think they're like putting people off starting their own new channels and things yeah. because it's so hard now, mm. because it's not organic anymore. So they're, they're going to kill it off if they don't have new people coming through all the time. Mm. So they need to buck their ideas up a little bit. But anyway, we're grinding through. We'll push through. Shit always changes. It's the fluctuations up and down is life. Yeah. Is what it is. Can't let things beat you down, people. You just, if you have a, a you know, if you know what you're doing is good and you enjoy it and you love it, stick with it. Unless yeah. it's unless it's killing kittens. In which case, keep that to yourself. Maybe stop as well. <laughs> but it is true. Like, nothing ever goes smoothly. Um, and you have to constantly be doing lots of different things and constantly totally have agree. lots of irons in different fires. Or lots of irons in the fire. What's the saying? Many irons in the fire. I don't know. Try lots of different shit. I don't know. So we're trying some new things outside of YouTube and social media and things this year. Investing in different things, different ideas, other loves and other passions. Um, oh yeah, so I said I had the bike back out. Doing motor vlogs again. So they're up and coming for you guys. Um, which is basically like, almost like me, a solo podcast on a bike. I was talking chat about a subject matter that you guys want to hear about. So let me know about subjects you want to hear on the podcast and on the motor vlog. Um, only issue with it was... And likewise, things that you'd like me to be talking about as well. Um, on my channel. I uh, had Can't microphone think. issues. Filmed the whole motor vlog. Microphone sucked. Had to re- I'm having to redo it. I'm not happy with it. So, um, yeah, I'm trying to, trying to hook up a different microphone for that to make that happen. But that will be coming your way. Um, clothing, the DSR lines. People asking about that. We've had a number of setbacks. I know I keep saying it like I'm making excuses. Kind of... Kind of my fault. It is plus, your fault. Plus technical issues as the distribution line we use for it have completely changed all the back end and they've got a new system, a new shipping out system and we have to implement all that to make sure we can get shit out to you guys and before we Lex do And then didn't do it even though we got a two big month launch. warning. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I didn't do it. It's so fucking boring, guys. It's so boring. I just have to sit down and do it. But every time I just sit down to do it, I just think there's something more productive I could be doing. But not really. I just, no, it's just because I hate really it. It's just it's boring. Like, it's just because it's boring. No, but like it is. It's Actually super boring. So um, the, we still, we have new jeans here and new t-shirts, which will be going live um, very, very soon. I am going to sit down and do these DMO things uh, this week. So hopefully if I can try and get it up and, and running, hopefully uh, by the end of the week, we will push those fuckers out. Put on with today's subject, and that is the ugly truth of being shredded. So we're talking about... Whether you're striving for eternal shreds or whether you're just dieting for the summer. Let's cover some of our experiences of being lean. Different ways we did it. Let's start with the dumb fuckery of the way we started. Um, and that was bro. Everyone starts bro. So if, and by bro, if you don't know what that means, that means like, so you're following chicken, broccoli, rice. Really plain food. Because you believe there's good food and bad food usually. Yeah. Clean eating. Clean eating. Of which... No such thing. In in reality. Really. There's no such thing as clean eating. Oh, there's as, no there's no such thing as clean and dirty food. No. There That's is just the point. there is a such thing as clean eating, but it doesn't mean that there is such no, thing. There is no I think it's really bad. I think it's like, you know, the same thing as cheat days. Yeah. It's a bad context to put to your food. Yeah. Like to give them It's it's giving that thing of rewarding and punishing yourself with food. Yeah. And it's just a bad thing bad relationship. to have. Yeah, it's a bad, it builds bad relationship food. It builds eating disorders. And it means that when you look at food, you don't look at it as what it is, that you can just enjoy it. Whether your macros are high or low, you can still enjoy food. Yeah. But when you're clean eating, technically you can't enjoy it because you have to look at things that are clean to eat. And it is a recognised eating disorder of when people get obsessed with clean eating and organic and so basically yeah clean basically means like yeah no process no sugar 
low salt, plain, uncoated yeah. foods, bland, bland yeah. usually. And the bro bro method of clean eating, it's like, because there's a lot of people who do it that aren't bodybuilders. That's yeah. the thing. Clean eating isn't necessarily dedicated to bodybuilding. No, it can se. just be people who cut out huge amounts of food options from the diet because they think it's bad for them. Um, like salt, yeah. uh, like the yellows of eggs and all these things. You know, they don't eat red meat because they think it's, you know, all that kind of thing. Just anything where it's extreme, where they cut cut a lot of things from your diet and but literally to be honest, won't lot, touch them. A lot of clean eating isn't even to do with cutting out fats or things like that. It's literally cutting out like your choices. And a lot of times it can be quite a high fat diet or a high carb high diet. Carb, I'd say, yeah. No, but it can be high fat because usually the egg, the egg yolk is included. Red meat is included. Things like that. Peanut butter is okay so long as it's like organic, organic yeah. unprocessed peanut butter. But that's okay. But then yeah. your store bought, your store bought Asda cheap one is not okay because it's not clean. And yeah. you're like, the difference in the macros is negligible. Yeah. Fair enough. You don't want the additional palm oil, or you don't want the additional. Go for the organic, but not for the point of it being clean or dirty. Yeah, because basically it's like food racism. Yeah. You you can't. So here's here's the breakdown of it. If you don't really understand macros, macros are macronutrients, so proteins, carbs, and fats. Everything is made up of macronutrients. Macros is not a diet. It's what foods are made up of. Yeah. Um, and the clean versus dirty. So they anything that's not allowed is kind of processed, prepackaged. Um, obviously sweets, chocolates, um, high impact foods, they're all thought to be terrible for you. But the reality of it is your body breaks down all foods into proteins, carbs and fats regardless of what it is. It's just that the processed foods have less micronutrients in them. So yeah. less vitamins and minerals and stuff like that, which is a viable point. Yeah. You should be eating foods that are rich in micronutrients and, and things like that. But as long as that's covered in your diet along that way, as long as your micronutrients are covered, it doesn't matter where the macros come from. Because if you're covering your micronutrients, you're having a pretty whole food diet anyway mm. to be getting those in. So then if you want to add things alongside like ice cream, chocolate and little treats and that, that's fine as long as you're monitoring your food and controlling your calories. Yeah. That's all it is. It's that simple. So and The problem with clean eating is that people are so denied of what they want that they end up usually clean eating leads to binge eating. That's yeah, usually the result it's a break, because it's you, a break point. yeah, you're just you're restricted so much to the point that you're craving things you've probably never craved before. Yeah. I remember when I clean, I was clean eating. I was craving marshmallows because obviously I wanted sugars. Yeah, and like, what's the most sugary thing you can get? It's like a marshmallow, and like that's all I want. And like, I I really you're not don't a big care. Fan. I'm not, not like, not like a big I'll have like no. Like I have them, like I don't hate them, but like I don't love them. And like this was literally like it wasn't craving. People were like, oh, what are you craving when you were like when I died? I think we've got a bag of marshmallows in that pantry. It's been there for about a year. I know. Not touched them. Yeah. Yeah. But like I, they were like, what are you craving? And they expected me to like say, oh, Domino's or all them kind of things. And at the time, I didn't really care. I'm not. I'm not a big fast food person anyway. I don't really. I'm not really that into like. No, you're not. You're really not. Um, I prefer to have like go and have a really nice pub meal than have fast food and when they asked me what I was craving I was like marshmallows and they're like that is so weird <laughs> you can just see the look on their face but that was but the it, only thing it, I was it's, craving it's, it's not even like I think it's a, and it's mental because you're telling yourself like it's like the don't press the red button yeah and so you're gonna have a break point everything about dieting and, and, and being consistent is balance if you don't have balance you will crack yeah. If you have anything that's too extreme, you will not be able to maintain it. And this is the thing about the ugly truth of being shredded. And that is the fact that most people will get lean their first time around doing it badly, doing it bro. Yeah. It's a standard way. Usually it's kind of a semi-starvation style where they're doing hella loads of cardio. They're eating really minimalistic food. And it will work the first time. We're so, not condoning it or encouraging it. No, don't. But it, it, will it, it will work the first time because you're... You, you've done no pre because you probably you've probably been eating relatively balanced normal. and consistently yeah. and normal prior to this change that you do so you have no real metabolic damage or anything like that to the body um you and then when you switch when you do the the bro diet for the first time because you everything else is healthy your body kind of deals it buffers your errors in your diet yeah. so even though it's so restrictive your body copes with it but you just still cause damage during that time. Yeah. So like you'll bring your metabolism down. Obviously, again, you get that, start to get that bad relationship with food. Then, then when you come out of the diet, most people don't 
know about the way they should come out of the diet. So then they go back to just eating normally, away from their restrictiveness. Usually, like you said, they've been craving stuff. Yeah, and so usually, if, if you are doing it for a bodybuilding competition and you've had like a bro, a bro coach coaching you, they literally encourage you, even as a woman, to eat. I was told that I should be eating one takeaway meal a day. Oh yeah. In my off season. When you when you came out the show. Yeah. No reverse diet. Just like, straight into bang calories, yeah. calories, calories. Yeah, it was just like and I was thinking like maybe one a week like yeah, was yeah. going to be my thing. No, he wanted me to eat like and like for me who was not into takeaways, but I was like, I don't really like takeaway and he was like, yeah. You need to eat burgers and you need to eat chips at least once a day and I was like Straight out the diet. That was like and that was just gonna like fuck me up. So you're going from you're going from restrictive calorie diet yeah and then banging your body all of a sudden overloading it with calories and expecting it to deal with it without getting fat yeah it no the body works it's it's the reason you have to take like 16 20 weeks when you diet really is because the slower the better and when you come out of it it's exactly the same you can't just jump the body back up in calories and expect it all of a sudden to jump back to being normal you have to bring it back up and out of the yeah. diet and build it back up again yeah to be capable of dealing with the calories that you're putting in and whatnot so what happens is then as well if you carry over that bad relationship from food after you've done your diet and back into your technical off season whatever you want to call it or back into trying to eat normally um you end up still having quite an unbalanced negative relationship with food even yeah. though you're not dieting anymore you're going to start hating your body because you're not going to be shredded anymore. Yeah, and then you get this warped view of yourself. But then, so coming out without that reverse diet, putting the calories back on, people tend to get fat because they've damaged their body doing a really restrictive, almost starvation diet where they've just basically you've eaten too little of calories. And the goal when you're dieting is not to starve your body, it's to feed weight loss. And yeah. by that we mean eat as much as you can while still dropping weight. Yeah. You only drop the food when your activity's gone up you don't do both. Don't put activity up and then drop food as well because you don't know which is... You, you, you're double whammying. Yeah. You're using all the tricks in your bag. Step by step, stage by stage, which again is why you need that timeline of diet. But once your activity is up and you don't want to do any more activity, that's the only time you start pulling food down and little by little. Yeah. And that's that's how it's supposed to be, but it's not the way everyone does it. Everyone goes straight in hard, boom, from the get-go. I'm dieting now. All of a sudden, everything's out the house and they're on plain chicken, rice and broccoli. And it's just not, it's not, not the best way of doing it, but most people will do it that way first off. And if you've done that in the past and you've had a bad rebound in your weight, then we can say, start looking into macros. Yeah. Start looking into, Research. if you don't know, if, you, if you're really unsure, there are macro calculators out there, but if you're very unsure, I think it is, it is a good investment to hire someone, we're not saying me or you, but like hire someone to do your macros for the first time, explain it to you, go through it with you. And then you have that for life. You have that information for life. It doesn't leave you. Like I've got a client, clients coming back to me every couple of years, not because they just said like, oh, I got such good results with you two years ago. I started slipping again. I just need some accountability again. And yeah. they come back and they get the accountability they need for a couple of weeks and then they're back on track again. And there's no shame in having someone externally to guide you. But most people who are professionals at what they do have yeah. a coach. Well, I've got a coach. Because it's the accountability thing. Yeah. And it's the fact of just having someone to bounce things off. Yeah. It just makes you, it helps you stay on track. Right, because you're, you're not bullying yourself. Yeah. You, you know, oh, and it always helps, doesn't it? When you have someone telling you, no, that's fine. Yeah. Like even like the last couple Takes of weeks, out, obviously out. like I've gained like seven or eight pounds since my show yeah. and I've been reversing my diet and I just checked in with my coach and I was like, you know, should I be increasing my food even more? Should I, should I be having like, you know, like a higher day, something like that? And you agreed with him as well. You were like, no, you don't need a higher day. You're back up with maintenance. No, yeah, you don't need to And I maintenance. just kind of felt like I need this like higher day where I can have, because I'm, it still is in me, the whole relationship of like, it's my off season. I need to eat loads of dirty food. Do you know really? what I mean? It's it kind of, yeah, you don't lose the kind of mentality of it. Like, because I'm in my off season, so I'm like, I want to enjoy it for I the suppose, next couple of weeks. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, you can be like, when you're not not striving to be as lean, you do have those moments where you think, fuck it, can I eat that? Yeah. Which I mean, is fine every so often, but if you do that on a consistent basis, you are yeah. going to get that. Like, we had a really nice meal <laughs> like last night, would. just because we enjoyed it. And I was like, I was like to him, because uh, he came in from being out all day and he's like, I've eaten nothing. So he sat and ate hummus with slices of ham. It was the most disgusting thing I've it's ever watched. It's nice. It's not the whole thing of it. It probably tasted nice. But to see you dipping ham into hummus mm. and eating it. Mm. I'd do a game right now. Yeah, it was mm. really Not attractive. even sorry. 
Not even sorry. It was just a noise and everything. I was mm. like, you're disgusting. <laughs> and then he had himself a little pate and crackers party beside yeah. me on the sofa. And then I was like, oi, <laughs> I've cut back my macros today because we're going out for a nice meal tonight. And I'm not having you being a pussy and pussying out on dessert. I didn't. I got I cheesecake. Know. Yeah, but you were contemplating. I that was just because I was You full. were like, I don't think I can eat a full dessert. I was like, I am not sharing. <laughs> you never share the dessert. Not the dessert. No one that I, had chocolate when we peanut share butter desserts, brownie. I don't get half. We have to like literally, if we share desserts, have you have to take to, literally... the half at the beginning, otherwise yeah. I'm not getting that half. It's fair news though. <laughs> you always got, I just want a taste of it. I'm like, no. Oh yeah. When it comes to desserts. So, oh, right, hang on, we're, going, we're skiving off here on the topic. So back to the, the being lean thing, because I think, here, yeah, where are we up to? Be, be, so be, uh, let's have a I've got my little list here on the phone. I put here, most people think it's going to be the crowning achievement of their fitness goal and so it becomes a sole purpose, but most have no clue about how to do it. So that was the point of why people jump on these crazy diets because, and this is the main thing actually, yeah, someone messaged me the other day because I put up a thing, I took my pops out on, for his beer on Sunday and people always messaged me going, oh, you can drink beer? How do you stay in such shape and drink beer? I'm like, well, one, I don't do it every day. Yeah. And two, macros. Like, it's, it's, just, a, it's just one drink. Like, yeah. it's, it's just a little bit of sugars. It's yeah. nothing crazy. You know, literally, if I wanted, I could eat my normal day and add a beer on top and just do like, I don't know, five minutes of jumping jacks. It literally is that simple. Like, if you put calories in that you shouldn't have had, you can literally just burn those calories off and balance your day. Yeah, but you don't want to be encouraging that either. No, I'm just saying it is literally that simple, though. If you're feeling super bad because you went over on something else and mentally it'll make you feel better, do some jumping jacks. But there are do people out there who... Well, I know I've done it before, where like you eat food and then you burn it, and that is another form of eating disorder. Yeah, they call it's that like cardio bulimic or something. Yeah, something it's like where that. you literally are burning off the calories that you can have consumed, and that's not a healthy attitude to have either. No. But it's all about balance. Like, exactly. If you're a normal person, not I'm not saying normal because no one's normal, but if you're like a regular person who doesn't have any kind of eating disorder, you feel a bit bad about having had like a big dessert or a you've beer. You've gone or well over. You've you've gone, you've had an unexpected intake. Yeah. Well, then and you, like, and you were on track and you were happy that you're on track and it's kind of made you yeah. a bit fuddly that you're off. Yeah. Well, then feel free to do a little bit of extra exercise. Yeah, this is but sometimes, guys, like. If you have a beer once a week, don't worry about no, it. No, literally, don't even worry about it. Don't even do a jumping jack. Do a jumping jack in celebration of the fact that you're having a beer and that you've had a good week and you're enjoying your life. Yeah. I mean, that was the point. So I took my pops out, had my Sunday beer, and people were messaging me and they were like, and then I put up a post saying, never sacrifice time with your family or friends for fear of your physique. Yeah. And, and then someone went back going, easier said than done. I got a message saying that. I'm like, not really. It, I, I, I not agree really. with that, Alex. No, it's not... You, I think no. it, it can be hard for people to do that when... I don't think you've ever, like, really struggled with being overweight. And for some people, it is a big, more mental struggle than physical struggle. And it's a very hard thing to overcome. Even the mindset of being overweight is always with you when you've been overweight. And I think that sometimes people will sacrifice f- fun with... F- Keep talking. Oh, right, sorry. Um, they will sacrifice um, family events and things like that because they, they, they feel the need to be slimmer and it is a struggle and yeah. it's not easy for everyone. Do you know no, what I mean? I get it, but uh, it's also, I mean, we put all this emotional turmoil on things, but the be all and end all of it is um, it's, it's, it really it, it is easier done than said. It is simple as understanding your food. Yeah. If you don't educate yourself on your food, then it's, yeah, not easy. Yeah. But the moment you understand food, it's so fucking easy because you have control. And the moment you have control, that's when that whole uh, fear and doubt and everything leaves you. So it's education education on uh, food and things like that. So let's start this video. So, and someone else was telling me, uh, sent me a message saying about, yeah, but if you want to get the, the physique you want, you have to sacrifice things. As if they were like saying, no, that's just the way it has to be. Like, if I want to get in this certain shape, I cannot go out with friends and things like that. That was exactly what I was saying. Yeah. And that's absolutely untrue. I think, absolutely I untrue. I think sometimes I, I agree and I disagree with what they said because I think, yes, you if you are setting a goal, you want to get to a certain weight or a certain shreddedness, yeah. you will have to sacrifice macros. 
but you do not have to sacrifice time with friends. No. You can still, like we could have easily gone out for a meal last night and made completely different choices on the menu. Yeah. You can still go and see your pop-up and you could have had a uh, soda water and he could have had a beer. Do you know what I mean? It's the whole point of, yes, you have to sacrifice your food and your intake and maybe not having that piece of cake or not having that big, you know, fish and chips. Mm-hmm. But you do not have to sacrifice time with people and that is a big thing that is like the contradiction because people think oh, well i don't want to i don't want to be around people that, i don't want to be in that yeah. environment I can't and that's when the there. healthy mindset goes you have yeah. to still be able to enjoy your life like i remember girls saying i can't wait to go to the cinema after after their prep was done and i was like and i'd always gone to the cinema because something i enjoy but you see i don't associate the cinema with food i enjoy, associate the cinema with going to watch a good movie yeah whereas so they associate it with ice cream yeah and, and like popcorn and stuff and I, i'm just not like that i'm not really a big popcorn person anyway so like i'm happy with my diet coke or whatever. but that's the point that's a, a still a binge though isn't it really like to, to, to be like even if you weren't dieting going to the cinema and indulging in popcorn and ice cream and and fizzy drinks and all that yeah. shit that's just that's that's not wrong because you're dieting. That's just wrong generally. Yeah. Like you, it you is ju- the whole reward. That, and it's the whole people thing. think that they're owed like they should be allowed to be able to have a family sized popcorn to themselves and a hot dog and this and watch a film. Well, I should be able to do that. It's like no, that's not how nature works. Yeah. Like there's no consciousness to nature. There's no con- it doesn't give a fuck. Like, it doesn't care what mood you're in. Yeah. You know, there's, and that's why food is so simple when you break it down. It's just macros. Like, what you eat gets broken down to carbs, proteins, and fats. Yeah. It, it's not affected by, because you're a little bit depressed, nature goes, I'll, 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 you can have that chocolate bar on me. That won't affect you. Yeah. You know, everything you put on your face is counted for by the body. And yeah. It's that simple. So if you want to have your popcorn and your fizzy drink and all that, that's fine. Bank macros. You know, you have to sacrifice elsewhere in the day to then go and have that. But that's the same thing as going out to see your family and friends. All you do is earlier in the day, prep for it. So earlier in the day, you don't have as many carbs or fats. So that when you then go out that evening, you can have them. And that's the point. There's this balance of coming in, but then you require the education to do that. So the ugly, one of the ugly truths of being shredded for a lot of people is they might look great, but these people have got no social life. They're sacrificing seeing friends and family and going out and doing fun activities, yeah. which is fucking living. Yeah. And we're here once, people. Yeah. Fucking <clears throat> live. Go and I see love, friends and do things. Obviously, like, um, Christian Guzman is doing his summer shredding. He does it every summer. And I have to say that Christian is a great example of someone doing it the right way. He does it once a year. He gets everyone involved. Yeah. And you see him he doesn't like he doesn't sacrifice time with his family and friends he shows everything he shows that like he gets up in the morning he's doing his 40 45 yeah, minutes no of one's cardio saying it's easy no like he's like and like he's he's showing what he has to eat one because he has to travel at work a lot yeah. he's going to expos he you know he has a girlfriend he has just, a business and... to you too, so when i've been saying it's easy way just to clarify i'm not saying that it's super easy to get shredded and that it doesn't take hard work 100 yeah. percent, it does take some sacrifices as in putting in time and doing the cardio and grinding through and, yeah. and, and committing to it. What I'm saying is is that you don't have to sacrifice your entire being. Yeah. So yeah, carry on. So. And that's what I was saying. Like Christian yeah. is a great example. Like he gets in amazing condition mm. and he does it the right way. He shares his macros with people and I'm, I'm sure anyone who listens to this what follows Christian anyway. But like he just does it in a good way. I, li- I like following his summer shredding because I like the fact that he shows exactly what he eats and he's not like... Christian is not like a brilliant chef or anything. No, no, like no. it's not like he's making these amazing meals or anything at home. He's going to Chick Fil A and he's doing all that, and he does it through IIFAM. He's doing it through his macros, and he he never ever like sacrifices his family and uh-huh. friend time and business. Everything still is being done. I mean, there's the right obviously going to have to be a few things like that you do miss out on when you do yeah. something. Anything you do to an extreme, to a, to a point of an ex, ex, uh, an extreme version of you know, a normal goal. Yeah. You will have certain things you have to counterbalance and whatnot. Yeah. But again, it's about that balance. And even though, yeah, like you're saying, it's actually funny you said that about Christian because I saw the other day, he put up a post and he's looking really good. Yeah. But he still had to say in the post before, this did not happen overnight. Yeah. 
Yeah. No, I am not do this, that, and the other. You still um, have to do the disclaimer. And then he still had to say, I've gone from 180 down to 168 pounds. Yeah. You know, and because people were think, were, people who haven't paid attention have just gone and looked at one photo, made a judgment call, yeah. and then been like, oh, no, I couldn't look like that. But they haven't paid attention to how long he's taken to do it, yeah. where he started, how he's, you know, so it's all these things of looking at somebody and immediately thinking that it's unachievable. Mm when you've not paid attention to the backstory or the history. And it's like looking at people who look at diets and think they're constantly failing at diets yeah. because they don't understand food. And they think like a diet is something magical created by somebody and it's some trickery. Yeah. All a diet is, is a recalculation of macros. Yeah. That's all Weight Watchers is. Weight Watchers is macro control made really simplistic. Yeah. They prepackage food for you that limits the amount of calories you're taking in and balances macros, gives a decent balance. So their point system is a really rudimentary yeah. macro calculator. Because it's based on, um, it doesn't take into account protein, but it takes into account fats and carbs. Yeah, which so they allocate a single point to for say yeah. 100 carbs or whatever, 100 calories. Yeah. So ladies, guys, if you've done Weight Watchers or anything like that and you don't think you can do macros, you've as already in been calculate doing it. macros, you've partially already been doing it, yeah. yeah. And that was from, like I, when I, I've been dieting probably since I was about 19 or so. And um, when I started out, it was Weight Watchers. So when I met Lex and he taught me about macros, it made a lot of sense to me because I was like, I already had that bit of information already yeah. there that I was kind of like, oh, so it's kind of like Weight Watchers. You can eat what yeah. you want. So like, you just have to make smarter uh, choices yeah, for your what, food. It's word, like this. It? You can eat what you want with Weight Watchers. Yeah. But no, because that's why you're eating buying Weight Watchers food because they're creating food that's lower impact. So they're yeah. giving you a slice of carrot cake yeah. but it's not really because it's their version that has less butter less sugar yeah. actually usually not less it's probably, sugar it's probably just, just a smaller fats. it's just portion fat. control usually but yeah their portion control for starters are smaller yeah. slices yeah but they're also lower in in sugars and fats yeah. so yeah there's this is what we're talking about is is the the fact that a lot of you guys think you're made to think it's not even your fault you're made to think it's this horrible sacrifice to get a certain way and look that way because that's what old school people have been saying for years and there's this real bad thing in america as well where coaches don't enlighten their clients as to they what's don't happening educate them. no they yeah. literally give them a meal but the worst thing you can do is buy a meal plan from someone and by that i mean something that tells you exactly what to eat from the morning to the evening with no explanation yeah so if you get one and it has macros and a breakdown and explanations perfect but if all you get is eat this at this time and this at that time and yeah. no explanation as to why. And when you change something, they tell you no reasons why. They just change things. You've been kept in the dark deliberately. Yeah. So they've got you like a fish on a hook You're like to keep bringing you back. I, you I'll give you an example them. of it is when I was clean eating and had a coach. When I asked him, because at the time I was like, I was obviously seeing the results. Like you said, I, it was my first time dieting. First diet time, yeah, yeah. And I saw the results and I looked phenomenal I had this phenomenal transformation in six months or seven months and I looked amazing and then that was when people started asking me about how I did it because obviously if you show it I showed the transformation people were like how did you do it you know and yeah. then I started getting asked about um do you carb cycle and like I was like a rabbit in the headlights being asked these questions because I didn't have a clue because I was blindly following someone else's instruction as in like uh, meal for meal yeah so yeah. like I, I would literally write down what I ate like clean eating and he'd go yep yeah, that's fine or he'd like go oh, I'll take that out and like literally not cut that back take it out yeah so back. like it was yeah. like I remember one of the things that I was looking forward to after my first prep was having berries back in my in my porridge because he's Jesus taken the berries Christ. out of my porridge for the past couple of weeks. That is a classic removing yeah. fruit from the diet. Yeah, so and like I was afraid to eat strawberries. That's how bad it was because the sugar content. <sighs> but um, he, I, I was being asked about carb cycling and stuff, and it was more like I was in the bodybuilding industry, so people would start questioning, you know, what, what what's your carb cycle? What you do? Blah blah blah. What's do, your magic trick? Yeah, out? and I was just like, I didn't know because I didn't understand what carb cycling was. I didn't understand anything about carbs, fats, and proteins at the time, and. So I asked him, I was like, um, should I be like counting my carbs? And like at the time I thought a hundred grams of potato was a hundred grams carbs. of carbs. <laughs> yeah. So like if I had started doing it, I would have been on like, you know, yeah, crazy yeah, yeah. in my head, I would have been on but, crazy carbs. But yeah, yeah. um yeah, so I asked him and he turned around to me and this is how he had me on the hook with him was he made me feel so stupid for asking. He was like, who do you think you are? Do you think you're an Olympia pro? He goes, only Olympia pros need to know that information. 
Jesus. So he had me so dependent on him and his knowledge that like I was made to feel, first of all, he broke me down to make me feel stupid for asking the question. So then I go, oh, sorry, you know, like. Yeah, yeah. And then which, um, which, like he went back to having the control over me. And that is a big thing is these, because yeah, they, cause they have you hooked in. Because if well, you want to get results, you, you have to go back to this person. Yeah. And immediately when you go to them, you're, you're also kind of submissive to them, aren't you, in the first place? Because you're reaching out to them for help. Yeah. So immediately you're the subservient one of that yeah. relationship. Um, and that's where all that yeah and so this this thing of, of coaches keeping people in the dark if you have somebody that doesn't tell you why you're eating what you're eating yeah. or doesn't have you measuring food they don't know what they're talking about and yeah. I guarantee they're starving you starving you thin yeah. um, and then and then the bet, worst bit is then if people look flat at the end or something like that the coach will insinuate that they've not worked hard enough on their cardio Usually they'll say something like that. Well, you didn't push yourself hard enough oh, on the cardio. I remember my coach had a number when, of girls and probably still does, to be when honest. When usually they're absolutely binging on the cardio yeah. and pushing, like telling them to do way more than they yeah. should be doing. But he used to like talk about the other girls saying, well, she's definitely cheating. She's cheating on her diet. Because, and, of, that, because like, and he would say that to me about other girls that he was, because I was obviously getting the results, yeah. but it was my first competition, so I got the results. Because but these girls, it was probably their third or fourth competition, and they were struggling to lose the weight. And he because started- Because of the damage he'd caused previously. Yeah. And so yeah. instead of him taking credit for the fact that, no, I've ruined this girl's metabolism, she probably will struggle for life now losing weight. He was like going, telling people, going, oh, it's not me, she definitely cheats on her diet. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah. so if there's any error, their they, reputation. they don't put it on themselves at no. all. There's no fault of their own. Yeah. It's the client's fault. Yeah. It's terrible. Yeah. So, yeah, if any of you are in that kind of situation at the moment, literally cut all contact with that person. Don't pay them any more money and go do some research on macros and find some help with somebody that does that. If you still want someone to help you through and, and give you that. There are, like, and there's people now, like my coach coaches other coaches. You, so oh your, your current one yeah yeah, yeah. Sorry, so like I've got a coach guy. now um who's um, amazing and obviously I'm a coach I just need someone to be accountable to he understands that but he coaches coaches so he would coach someone like me to be a better coach and he is like really he really knows his shit I'm really happy that I'm with him he knows his shit he's like done so much research but he mm-hmm. that is his main priority right now is coaching other coaches to be better to coaches be better. so there are people out there and there is a community of people who are educating themselves and getting up on knowledge so they can help people in the right way and they know how to deal with people's plateaus and you know because they're getting yeah. all this education from this Plus, there's a lot of trial and error goes on in yourself like i know i practice a lot of things on myself yeah prior i would never have somebody do something i hadn't done yes that's one, number one, because if you haven't done it, you don't have knowledge of it. It's pretty much that simple. There's the theory of how things work, but then there's implica- there's putting it into practice. And obviously in the real world, there's a lot of limitations that you don't see when you put it down on paper. So that's always a good thing to try is, you know, if something doesn't work, there is always another solution though. This is one thing I want to get across. So if your diet seems to be plateauing or um, you're feeling like you're kind of stagnated, one, make sure that you're not analyzing yourself in the mirror every day in a really critical manner. Okay, just get on the scales each morning, take your weight, note it down. You should only be taking an average of every seven days. So every day weight doesn't matter. It's that average of the seven yeah. days. And if your average is less than the week before, you're cool, you're on track. Yeah. So don't be obsessive day to day because you will go mirror blind. It's yeah. a thing. It's like the more you look at yourself, the more negative things you'll start to focus on. So pictures are a good idea. Videos of yourself are a good idea yeah. because for some reason... I like reason, to do my updates on Instagram because I like to be accountable to my followers as well. Yeah. And just to show them the real, realistic. It's not like me doing this massive transformation because I'm not going to be losing these huge amounts of weight anymore because I've gotten to a healthy point. And they can see the steady They trickle. can see like, okay, yeah. this was two weeks ago. This was three weeks ago. And it's a more realistic... It's You'll see little changes, but it's, you know, yeah. they're not these major transformations. You yeah. will see these crazy major transformations like if you look at my photo from five years ago compared to now obviously yeah. i look completely different but if you look at things week to week especially with people who have found a good balance you can see like you know um it's not going to be these major huge peaks and troughs kind of thing no but it's, it's when you put that beginning picture to the end picture side by side then you go whoa yeah you notice that real change um but that's the point is that if there is something wrong you feel like you're plateauing out one, try and stop that hypercritical nature um, of staring at yourself intently in the mirror every single day. Um, take videos of yourself 
like po- uh, you know doing turns quarter angles quarter turns sorry and maybe posing if if you if that's the things you're doing um because that will help you kind of step back from looking at that mirror image of yourself and it, it does work um especially because you can see like your own back and stuff like that which you can't see when you're mm. looking in the mirror that's huge just set the timer on your your phone yeah take you some you don't have photos. to share it with anybody just do it for yourself it's just for you and not to be over but, hypercritical yeah. you can also see People I sometimes, I always say to my, my clients, because they'll uh, when they sign up with me, I like the first thing to do is to pick out good things about themselves because women will come to me and go, I hate my hate ass, this, this I hate this. my legs, yeah. I hate my arms. And I'm like, yeah, but look at that tiny little waist and, you know, yeah, and look at how amazing quad. your quads are. Yeah. I'm like, yeah, you have a bit of fat there. We want to get rid of that, but you've got amazing good shape. And it's like, you have to start looking, bef- if you're a person who's hypercritical, which all of us are at some point, mm. You have to start, just take a step back and go, you know what, I, I look good in this and I look good in this and we're going to improve that. Rather than being like, I hate this about I hate myself. It, I want it gone, you just yeah. improve it and then work with, yeah, but I've got really good arms. Self-love is not a bad thing. No, it's like surrounding yourself with positive, pe- positive yeah. like-minded people. That theory of the more positive people are around you, the more positive you are. It's the same in yourself. If you constantly, like a negging on yourself all the time yeah. you're gonna be in a bad mood you're gonna feel shit yeah. so start appreciating the journey you've been on where you've gone from and where you've come to and also so getting back to my point on the thing is if you are stagnating um there's always a solution yeah like the reason something's not working is because somewhere there's an error that you can fix you are not stuck plus if you've been dieting and suddenly everything's halted that doesn't mean you failed. It just means you paused. Yeah. And, you, and that, you can press the play button again. You just have to find the fix and yeah. then it will it will carry on moving forward. Yeah. You don't go backwards just because you've suddenly got to a plateau point. You don't suddenly start reversing back to where you started. Yeah. You still are at where you got to. Yeah. And you can just I find a new like, way through. Even if your weight goes back up to what it previously was, you are never going to be that person again because when you started, you had none of the knowledge that you have now. So, yeah. like, you know, my weight has gone back up higher than I'd like it to. But I know that I've gotten back down again and I know I can do it again. And yeah. that's something that you should always know, that your body is capable of a lot more than you think it is. You just have to be, like, focused and you have to be consistent and not give up the first hurdle. Like, if, if in the first week you don't lose a stone weight, that's probably normal. <laughs> You know, it, it just like looking at... <laughs> no, it's true. Yeah, realistic goal setting is yeah. a huge thing. I think some people go, okay, I'm all or nothing. And they go all guns blazing. I'm going to go to the gym seven days this week. I'm going to do five cardio sessions. I'm going to like eat like... I'm going to hit my macros every day. And then they they get to Wednesday and they've gone 10 grams over their carbs by breakfast time. And they haven't... They've only been to the gym once. And they're like, oh, screw it. And yeah. it's, it's the all or nothing. Whereas if you'd said... I'm being realistic. Okay, I work really hard. I have like, you know, a nine to five job. I've got kids. I've got family. I'm going to make sure that I get to the gym three times this week. I'm going to get in a good, like, four to five minute workout because that's all I'm going to fit in. Yeah. And then if you get in there four days and you get an hour done every day, you're winning. Like, you're winning that week. Yeah. It so is. It's, 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 you don't have to be all, yeah. all balls, you know. Yeah. But you make mistakes. But there are going to be weeks where you're a bit lackluster and there are going to be points where you fall off a little bit. But yeah. it doesn't matter. You just restart the next day. It doesn't mean everything's... That's another thing, yeah, that thing of, oh, I've, um, I've gone over by five grams this today, so the day's ruined. Yeah. No, nothing's ruined. Plus, the more you get into your diet, and the, the, the better you are with it if you're controlled and you're doing it in a healthy manner, your body is a, ha, has many, many coping mechanisms and it will deal with many, many issues. Yeah. It is smarter than you are and it will maintain a balance, whatever. So it doesn't have the conscience that you think you're giving it. It's just, it works on... In versus out. It's that simple. Calories and in, calories out. Yeah. Your body does not have, your it cells it in your body care. do not have it a conscience. Care. They don't, when your your stomach feelings. gets food, it doesn't go, oh, that's cake. Yeah, no. Or, oh, that's porridge. Or, you know, it no. just says food. Like, it, literally all it has is a like, sensor that calculates that is carbs. I always go to this one, Mars bars versus roast potatoes. Yeah. So, like, a Mars bar is around eight grams of fat. Usually, I think it's about... So it's like 28 grams of carbohydrate and, I don't know, bugger all protein. So you're like 28, 30, let's call it 30 grams of carbohydrate and 8, 9 fat. Yeah. That's pretty That's pretty much exactly the same as what you get from 150 grams of roast potatoes. Or, or, well, maybe 100 grams of white roast potato or um, 
150 grams of sweet potato in like an oil. But to your body, to us, in a, on a plate, that's two very different things. One's a sweet and a candy bar and a wrapper. Yeah. The other one's a whole food baked from the ground and the earth. Yeah. But your body breaks those two things down into 30 carbs and eight fats. Yeah. It doesn't know. We've given the name Mars bar to it and we've given the name to it, but your body doesn't know. Obviously, the potatoes will have more micronutrients in them, so they're the better option. And there's going to be, and volume it wise, it's going to fill you more. So yeah. it's a smarter choice. But if you wanted the fucking Mars bar and you had 30 carbs and eight fats, available to use on it and you're happy yeah. to do that and you're going to maybe be hungry later but you don't care then eat the fucking Mars bar yeah. but that's it it's all about those choices and making the choices along the way like anything and then being accountable for your choices yeah. so like if you've ate, ate in the Mars bar and later on you're hungry then accept that fucking hunger if you blew the macros on it yeah. and make yourself learn for next time or eat some extra food and do some extra cardio balance Yeah. that's all it is balance people so that's what we want to kind of get across today. I, I think that, geez, time goes quick when we start talking about dieting yeah. things, doesn't it? What are we on now? So we are 50 minutes in. So we've got like 10 minutes. Yeah. 10 minutes. Fe- then finish. I go to the gym because I have to work off all that food from last night. <laughs> um, what, could we, what, else, what else is it? Uh, one of the major things when people are cutting, what's the other major thing? Alcohol. Should we get back to that? People are always yeah. crazy about alcohol. Do you know what it was with alcohol with me? You have a different experience with alcohol because you just didn't really enjoy it too much anyway not that just i'm not a beer booze yeah. booze hound whereas for me like I, I was never a big drinker growing up anyway even though i'm irish um i was i just i used to be one of the people who pretended to drink when we were like teenagers i just didn't i didn't like the taste of anything so yeah. it wasn't until later in life that you know they started to making cocktails and i kind of like the sweeter tasting things i like mm. pres- a glass of prosecco you glass of like wine glass of prosecco. and uh, you know like I, I have like a more defined palette now so i know the things i like but i'm not crazy about alcohol anyway but the main thing for me was that um when we did go out and have like our cocktail nights girls nights and um the next day you were had a rage and hangover like and you were just pretty much don't use yeah it wasn't even the calories in it that i cared about or the food it was the fact that for me the reason i cut back on drinking is because I like to go to the gym at the weekends particularly when I was working nine to five Monday to Friday because the weekends I used to get a really good work in and uh, work out in on a Saturday and Sunday because I had more time and oh, so you didn't want to be I didn't want to be hung over it so yeah. that was when I, I, I pretty much completely cut out alcohol for about a year or two because I just I was really focused on my training and I was really enjoying it and I felt like nothing to do like my coach used to say oh you can have like vodka and diet soda or whatever but I was like yeah but I don't want it because I don't want to be hung over I don't want to miss my training session yeah. tomorrow so I just it wasn't that I wasn't allowed to have it but I just didn't want it because, in the last prep you mean um no no it, when I was like bro dieting oh he let you have alcohol yeah I was allowed so he to have would, he wouldn't let you have um fruit but you were allowed to drink alcohol I was allowed to drink. God, your not moron every siren night. should have been going off. My, not every night, obviously. It was like, yeah. but on a, like, because we were at a gym event, I remember, and he was like, you can have like a, a, a vodka. And, like, I like diet. it how they say things like, you can have a white wine. Oh, no, but, that but was you, the thing, but, actually. But you couldn't have red. <laughs> like, I was allowed to have a vodka. I was allowed to have clear liquids, so I was allowed to have vodka. Obviously. But I never I never liked vodka anyway because it, it, it just doesn't suit me. Yeah. So I was allowed to have vodka and like a, a clear mixer. Like, seven up or yeah, sprite yeah. or whatever what but, not a diet one no no no, no. it has to be diet oh, right. obviously but uh, it has to be clear and i was just like no i just had like a diet coke instead but the point of it is if you like drinking is actually fine as long as you don't binge yeah so if you want to have a glass of wine when you go out for a meal with your family and friends you're yeah. absolutely fine you can just like alcohol is its own macro so you have proteins carbs fats and then alcohol but we don't get an alcohol allowance but you don't get yeah you don't really try you obviously try to limit it as much as you can because it does have a knock-on effect to how you feel the next day and there's that if you have too much but here's your thing it's okay to still have it in your diet on a regular ish basis and health benefits of having one or two glasses of wine a week or one or two units of alcohol a week are actually better it's better to have those than have than be teetotal yeah. in terms of reduction in heart disease osteoporosis in women um, prostate cancer in men uh, it helps also alcohol actually does help you um to balance your insulin yeah. levels within the body um so there's a whole bunch of positive effects that can come from um, a few glasses of, of wine or a couple of beers a week 
Yeah. Um, so you don't have to feel bad. It's not even, this is the thing. So the whole point of today was to say like, to get rid of that negativity with food. So not having a cheat day. Because again, you're giving it a negative connotation. You're saying you're cheating, like you're doing something wrong. Yeah, one, you're cheating on your diet. One cheat, yeah. One cheat day is, uh, is, is kind of nonsense. But I appreciate why people kind of like to do them and, and whatever. But I mean, one, a full day of just eating shite is going to leave you feeling crap the next day, waterlogged for three days. Um, and so, and it promotes binge eating. Yeah. So it's not a good idea. Um, refeed days are where you calculate that you're allowed some extra macros on uh, one or two days of the week, whether you break that, the, uh, you know, you can break it down over two days yeah. and have a little bit of a, a, a little bump, or you can have one day where you have a bit of a higher bump, um, where you give yourself some more carbs, some more fats, and a little less protein on that day. Um, that's perfectly fine and is a great one for psychological boost. Yeah. Um, I, I, I encourage that with my girls um, that I coach. Usually the first couple of weeks, they literally are straight hitting their macros. And once I see that they've established themselves and I kind of trust them and I know that they're ready, then I kind of tweak their macros so yeah. that they have... It's it's at that point where they'll start getting cravings, especially for women, I think, yeah. as well. Um, yeah, the first couple of weeks of not having one is a good idea yeah. because it um, allows you or your coach to see how your body's reacting to yeah. the numbers in the diet. Whereas if you put refeeds in from the beginning, you're kind of giving this yeah. this anomaly of a spike, so it makes it harder to judge. Yeah, where those and I think are. it's giving it's giving the mentality of a cheat day as well, even though it's a refeed day. Yeah. you don't want to have that from the initial offset. So I like to just like get them hitting their macros, get them used to hitting their macros, and then incorporate in the um the refeed days and that's when i encourage them i'm like you know if you're, you've been craving something the last couple of weeks you know that ice yeah. cream or that froyo go and have it and then have a really good workout yeah. that's what i always say like work it around your workout you'll, you'll feel great you'll feel energized you'll probably have the best workout you've had in a couple of weeks yeah it's it's the best way to get yeah, that Don't thing touch the hair sorry you had to just one up it was bugging me um that is a really good point actually as well is when you do have these refeed days so a refeed day basically is a, a day where you have higher macro allowance um so you can fit things in easier um like that mars bar that's 30 carbs that maybe you didn't want to waste 30 carbs on before but on a refeed day you've got an extra 80 carbs so it's no problem bang that boy in there i and used to always it... look forward to my bagel yeah i'd be like oh i'm having that i'm having a cinnamon <laughs> raisin bagel because it was like high carbs low fat and then i'd have a bit of peanut butter on it a bit of jam and i was like oh yeah. good times a lot of girls but do, uh, put, pe- yeah putting it around your workout is a great idea one because your body will utilize it really effectively but two it gives you that you, you've just had good food you're in a happy mood it gives yeah. you a positive relationship with that food and then the workout yeah um and don't call it a cheat day one have a calculated day don't binge just have a day where you elevate a little bit you have some more carbs and more fats and call it we, we started calling it not a refeed day a reward day yeah so it's a reward because you put in the effort during the week and you're going to get this little peak to be able to add in those extra things. Plus, by having these reward days where you have these extra allowances, they're usually on a Saturday or a Sunday and it makes life easier to go out with your friends or family yeah. and have that Sunday roast or yeah. a meal out on a Saturday evening or in a couple of drinks. And because you know you're on a higher day that day, mentally you're going to feel fine about doing so. Yeah. And you're not going to, you're not going to be like kicking yourself and, and, and making yourself feel bad for doing something and having a life. Um, I think we're kind of running... Yeah, that's it. Kind of running to the end of it now. But I hope... That, I mean, it's such a huge, huge subject, guys. It, we could go on for hours about it and it really be, get boring. <laughs> but I hope those few little things are um, helpful in ways of thinking about your diet. It is now down to you to go and research macronutrients and macro dieting. Look up I-I-F-Y-M if it fits your macros. Just go do some light reading on that. It is not hard to understand. And once you have read through a couple of things, you'll be like, holy shit, why have I not been doing this the whole time? Yeah. And it is not about eating Pop-Tarts and getting shredded. That was something we all did in the early days to prove a point. We all ate a Pop-Tart a day just to prove you could and still get in shape. But you don't. If you want to eat follow macros and still eat organic and whole foods and not eat sweets and not eat ice cream yeah. because you don't want to because you don't think they're great for you that's absolutely fine because yeah. it's just about those numbers of protein carbs and fats yeah the thing is that i i f i m it does not discriminate what your preference is with food so um anyone can do i f i m and most of you probably doing. are without even knowing it if you're following some kind of like people and it, it does like we weigh our food 
when we eat, because we're so used to doing it now. Yeah. But the more you weigh your food, the better you get at portion control because you get to know like what 100 grams or something looks like. Yeah. So it's beneficial in that way. But it doesn't have to be as complicated as weighing things on a scale to the gram. You can start as simply as a cup of rice mm. in each meal. And then be, because it's some for, just some form of consistent monitoring of the size of, of things going into your meals. That's all you need to start with. So do that, do research, educate yourself, and trust me, you will be a happier person. You will achieve your goals faster than you expect, and you'll be able to maintain them more than you ever thought possible once you start researching the fucking food. Then, you know, supplements are not an answer. That's what most people do. Most people think food's going wrong, add in supplements, that's why I'm missing. No, food is your go-to. Learn that and then move on from there. Um, that's it. That's it for this week. So Monday. I hope, I hope this has been relatively enjoyable. We've been quite alert and awake, I think, from Monday morning. I, I've I'm yawned a lot. That. I'd like to apologise. You I did do it if you watch on YouTube. We're both yawning away. Yeah. Um, so I hope you all have a great week. Tomorrow I'm putting up um, a full day of eating video to, to follow so this. Oh, oh, mine, mine's up today. Lainey's got one up today, so yeah. check that out Mine on her is a his and hers, so it's both of us. Oh, cool. Yeah. And then I'm putting one up on uh, tomorrow, Tuesday. My full day of eating will be there. And it is a look at um, a maintenance slash cutting diet that you can implement through elevation of cardio. And I do that whilst including fast food to prove a point. So, yeah, enjoy those two videos today. This has been Lex and Laney on the Crewcast. Make sure to hit us up. Make sure to subscribe on all the facets. So if you're on the iTunes, make sure to um, sign up to the podcast and get the notifications. Also, leave us a rating. Yeah. It really does help. It helps share the podcast, helps get us out there. And let me know about that channel. Do you want to see it um, on, a, on its own channel? Uh, that'd be really useful. And one note from me, last week I put up my fitness journey. So if you want to see, or if you want to hear more about my past, which goes before I even did my bro it's dieting, deep, 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 it's deep. a deep one and it was a hard one for me to record. And I'd really appreciate you all going and listening to it because I think it will help a lot of people and it already is helping a lot of people. It will open your eyes as well to stuff yeah. you didn't know about Lainey before, of things she's gone through that you maybe thought she never would have. Yeah. Um, and how so many people go through the same things and you don't even know it. I think it's it really has. Um, I have not got one negative comment on this entire video, and that's amazing. Um, it's like, and I've got I think about three hundred comments so far. So, uh, go watch it, love it. And... Laney Bobster, just search Laney Bobster on YouTube. It will be there. Yeah. Thanks for tuning in. We're gonna cut out now, otherwise we'll keep chatting. So peace out. See you on next Monday. We are out. <laughs>